everybody. Mighty Smart Guy Matt Sapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas, home of PHP Agency Home Office, and right now broadcasting from PHP Studios. I am the Chief Distribution Officer at PHP, as well as Board Council First Generation Cash Flow Millionaire here at uh, PHP Agency. If you see my face, it may be common to you, perhaps not, but if it is, it's because I'm a, a host of the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel, but this be my day job running an insurance marketing business. And uh, my co-host today is also first generation cash flow uh, 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 millionaire, an immigrant from El Salvador, Rodolfo Vargas. Rodolfo, my brother from Houston, Texas. Who do we have on the show today? Matt, uh, thank you for the introduction. We are excited. We are excited. By the way, if you're watching this, make sure that you invite some people because today we're going to have a great podcast, Matt. And I thank you for the introduction, uh, Matt, because you are also a multi-seven-figure income earner. Um, First generation immigrant from the Philippines. Yeah. And uh, I was born in El Salvador, immigrant from El Salvador, over here in the US. And guess what? We have a guest, what well, world class, world class guest that we have today. Okay. We call it the Lion Heart. That's what we call him. That's what we call him <laughs> because he goes from, uh, let me put it, he grew up in Bakersfield, immigrant from Mexico, her family from Mexico, Michoacan, Mexico. Right. So, all my friends from Mexico, you're going to love this. He, a uh, family from, um, his family from Mexico grew up in Bakersfield, California. He used to be in the oil field. He used to be in the oil field. He left the oil fields, and guess what? He goes into PhD, become an entrepreneur. He's what the, one of the most uh, important pieces in the company, killing it in the business. Uh, not only him making money, his family is making money with his brother, Ricky. So with that being said, the one and only Lionheart, Alejandro Aguilar, on the podcast today. Awesome. So in addition to us having uh, Alejandro, today's craze on this episode, we'll have the latest craze, the milk crate challenge and why it matters. What? To the insurance industry? Yes, we'll discuss that today. The milk crate challenge. Also, how the Afghanistan ordeal is being handled by a president. Why that matters to us here, our freedoms here in America. The current news affecting the life insurance industry and why many, many more opportunities are opening up. And again, there's a lot of talk about talking about no pre-pandemic economy ever coming back ever again, according to our Federal Reserve man, Jerome Powell. So that being said, we're excited. Get this podcast, episode 20, starting in three, two, one. Let's go. All right, we're back. So Alejandro Aguilar is our special guest today. Alejandro, welcome to the PHP podcast. What's going on, brother? Thank you, man. It's an honor to be here with you guys. And Rodolfo, Matt, it's always a pleasure. You got some, some of my biggest mentors, man. Now I'm here with you guys in the big leagues, right, in the broadcast. So appreciate that, brother. Alejandro. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, Go ahead welcome. Right. Welcome, Alejandro. Thank you. Tell Thanks. us. I know. You, let me put it. Matt, would you say that Alejandro doesn't look like a typical insurance person? Doesn't uh, look like. Well, huh? he doesn't look. If you're talking about now, what about five years ago? About six oh. years ago? <laughs> he didn't so, look like. Yeah. Not, but person. none of us does. None of us does. But Alejandro, tell us about you had hair. And how did you grow up? Huh? Well, you had, uh, uh, you had hair. <laughs> that was different now, right? But yeah, you know what, guys? Uh, my parents are from Mexico, Michoacan, like you guys mentioned. Uh, my dad, my dad's a short little five foot four little dark Mexican man. That's my pops. And my mom's Spaniard looking. It's probably the milk or the beans, something made me a little tall. Uh, but I'll tell you guys something, man. My dad came to this country. He said, you know what, Mijo? We grew up with no shoes. You know, they used to go to school with no shoes, guys, you know. And then uh, my mom, obviously, she she was very poor. They lived in a house with six, seven brothers and sisters and a, a small house, uh, you know, two rooms. And uh, I saw my family, you know, my, my family, the stories they tell me is that they struggled. And the reason why they came to America was because my grandparents were poor. My my great-grandparents were poor, you know. So when my dad made a decision, my mom they made a decision to come to America, they said, son, we want to give you a better life. You know, so... Uh, those sacrifices, when you hear that growing up, is part of your wiring, you know, psychologically from age four to 17 years old, how we wired the human beings today and uh, what makes people adults. So when you constantly hear your parents made that sacrifice, that sacrifice, it, it, it kind of holds you to a standard saying, you know what, I got to do something, bro. Like my, my parents jumped the border. They came to this country with no papers and no English. My guys, uh, my dad, by the time I was born, had five businesses. You know, he did real estate. He had a dealership. You know, he... He had a restaurant business. He said, son, he said, if I can come to this country with no papers and no English and be my own boss, what's your excuse born raised in this country? I'm like, dad, chill, I'm five, right? But that was the expectation, man. That was 
since I was a kid, you you had to do something. You know, so, you know, guys, I'm pretty sure Rolfo and, and Matt, you guys heard this saying, go to school, get good grades, get a good job. You live the American dream and you become successful, right? With the good benefits, the whole shebang. Well, I didn't understand that because I said, I, don't, I, I'm, I wanna have my own business because my dad did it, I have to have my own business. So then when I was in school, guys, I was a DNF student, man. I, for some reason, all these kids can memorize their ABCs. And I'm just like, man, they put me in the back of the classroom with the tutor. And, uh, you know, before you know it, they're trying to hold me back every single year. Guys, they try to put me in special ed my sixth grade year and my freshman year. And so, you know, when you start thinking your whole life that you're dumb, according to the school system, you know, it messes with you. So I'm thinking to myself, look, I'm not smart. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. I literally thought I was dumb my whole entire life. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, one, one side of me says, Go do something big with your life. You're supposed to, because that's the reason why we came to America. The other side of me says, well, according to the school system, you're done. So you're not going to get a degree. So you're not going to accomplish anything. You see that, that like identity issue you have, you carry there. So I'm, I'm confused. So the only thing I saw my parents do was be extreme hard workers and show me a lot of love and good principles with God. And, you know, we grew up as Jehovah Witnesses. So for me, it was like, okay, good principles, gospel, but we had an incredible work ethic. So I said, okay, I might not be that smart, but I can, I'll work you like a horse. So after 2008, Matt, you guys probably remember, and, uh, and Matt, 2008, the market crashed. My parents lost everything because of the lack of the financial education of money. So these were solid business people. My stepdad was making a quarter million dollars a year. <laughs> In his suit business, my step, my real dad, multiple six figures in real estate, the market crash, nobody taught them about money. Everything goes down. I go straight to the oil fields. I'm 18 years old. I say, okay, parents don't have a business for me to follow. No problem. Where's the money at? Oil rigs. So I started working in the oil industry since I was 18 years old, 19 years old. And, um, you know, I got health insurance, 401k, the whole shebang. But, uh, you know, guys, I'll, I'll tell you guys something really interesting. You know, you know, Rodolfo, as a, a you're Hispanic. Do you guys remember, maybe, so probably it might be the same thing in your culture, but we're taught that you're supposed to take care of your parents when they get old, right? That's correct. So, well, Filipino, Filipinos, we get it from the Spanish, and of course, Mexicans get it from the Spanish. Yeah, the same yeah, value, yeah. principle, and same from those yeah. conquistadors. Exactly, right? conquistadors. <laughs> yeah, so, but, but if you notice, biblically, even the Bible 2,000 years ago says, but you know what, you're supposed to take care of your parents. Yeah. So for me, yeah. I'm thinking to myself, okay, if I happen to pass away before my parents bury me, like, let's say I... My parents bury me before I bury them, right? Let's just say. I said to myself, I'm going to make sure that my parents are taken care of. So I bought myself a $500,000 life insurance policy, guys, at 19 years old without mommy and daddy telling me. I just purchased it. Because I said, this look, is look prior, this is prior PHP. You didn't know anything before. about PHP in the past. I was 24 when I got to PHP. Wow. That's so crazy. I had already had a life insurance policy of $500,000. Yep. Look, man, I said, if I ever die, I just want to make sure that my mom has some retirement money. Let my dad buy some real estate, right? Let them like let them travel. Let them enjoy life. And so the thing for me, guys, is uh, when I was when I was working in the industry, my dad calls me. You know, I become a supervisor in the oil rigs. He calls me. He says, "Mijo, I don't understand." I said, "What is it, pops?" He says, "I don't understand how you're born and raised in that country. You're six foot one with two languages, and you you work in a desert for another man. I just I just can't wrap my head around." <laughs> so. Guys, for other people making eighty something thousand dollars a year, 22, 23 years old, hey, not too bad. No baby mamas, right? No, no drug addict, nothing like that. <laughs> so I'm like, Dad, you should be proud of me. But at the same time, I knew why he was telling me that. He said, Bro, I expect something bigger from you. So, guys, I heard about PHP when I was uh, actually on a car accident, Matt, and when I was 23 years old, I got a car accident hurt my back, and I was going through some uh, therapy through my back, and then the my back was no bueno. So I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, man, you just took everything that I knew how to do was work with my body. You just, you know, life just took it away from me. Says you can't use your body no more. So what am I supposed to do if I'm thinking I'm done? Right? My mom says, "Mijo, there's a company looking for people." I, man, I walk in, guys, ugly small little office. Everybody's in their fifties and sixties, Caucasian, white. I'm full of tattoos, guys. Right? So I walk in. Everybody's in suits and ties. I'm like, what the hell is this? Right? I sit there, guys. I watch the presentation. They talked about entrepreneurship. I said, I like this, man. I'm like, yeah, entrepreneurship. I've always wanted to have my own business. My dad's been telling me. Two, they talked about money and life insurance. I said, 
Are you kidding me? Everybody needs to know about money. That's why my uncles and aunts are still working in their 50s and 60s because we spend more money on quinceañeras and carnasadas and micheladas than we do for our own future. <laughs> right? And the last thing they talked about was people like yourself. I saw people like Rolfo in Italy, mad travel, like on the slideshows, right? Like on the PowerPoint, how Rolfo and people like him were traveling. I said, man, if these guys can do it, they can travel the world. I want that freedom too. So I don't know what I got to do, but I told Hector when they recruited me, I said, look, man, I'm not smart. I am not smart, but I can work you like a horse. If you tell me to do something, I'll do it. But just if you're patient with me, I promise you, I'll eventually figure it out. So now, guys, I have multiple offices between me and my brother. You guys know that I have, you know, my brother's now making, I, it took me like two years and a half to recruit Ricky. Now he's making 950000 You know, I retired my dad at 26. I'm 31. Retired my dad at 26. Travel the world now. We got, we all just came back from Aruba, Croatia, Italy, Jamaica, man, right? We've been all these different places. And uh, it's it's been a blessing, you know? It's, it's honestly been a blessing. And uh, I'm just very, even talking about it feels emotional, knowing how much my life has changed from growing up in the hood to being where I'm at today, guys. Very well. Andrew, I, I, I want to sh share real quick. Uh, I want to share your Instagram profile real quick. I want you to go over yeah. a couple of pictures. I want you to explain them real quick. All right, cool. So, um, you, you, okay, so guys, if you haven't done so already, make sure you follow Alejandro here on IG. And then uh, do I, I double tap, Tegan? Yeah. Double tap? I'm good? Okay. It's good? Okay. And then uh, Alejandro, if uh, if you could explain, where's that roughneck picture at, man? Uh, oh, you're on the whole field. I think it's further down, down here. Uh, where, did I, where did I see that? Oh, man, you go. It's the throwbacks right now. Uh, yeah, you're the throwback, bro. Uh, there, there's that roughneck picture of you, man, when you're when you're oil field. Where was it? I just saw it. There it is. There it is. There you go. There it is. Bro, What? T tell me what's going on here. So that that day, um, that day we just busted about 15, 16 hour day. There's actually one. There's a picture somewhere around there when I'm dressed in oil. Dressed in oil. So there's something called a, there it is. So that day, there's something called a blowout, where the, the wells, guys, if you guys know the oil wells, they have a lot of pressure down there. The deeper you go, the more pressure these wells have. So that day, that, that, um, that oil came out because of the pressure, and it came out of the, the, the pipe, and it blew out. And so that oil is hot water, and it's hot oil, and it's literally burning your skin. But that day, since it blew out, my job was to stop the blowout so the rest of the crew doesn't get hurt. <laughs> I, I had to grab a wow. big old, it's called a Kelly cock, grab that sucker's probably weighs about 80, 90 pounds, and pick it up, stab it, and twist it, make sure we stop the oil from blowing out everybody else. So that day I got burnt. Uh, my guys, my crew actually had to help me get soap and actually help me. I had to get almost butt naked right there, man. These guys were helping me get all the oil off of me as it was burning me, man. That was a day that I earned my stripes. Alejandro. Oil. What, what is going through your mind over there when you, that is happening to you? What is going through your mind? How old are you when that happening? What is going through your uh, mind? When I, I was 21. I was 21 when that happened. Um, and I said, you know what I thought to myself? I said, uh, my parents taught me to, to protect others and, and, uh, and do whatever you do. You do it right the first time. And uh, you own your ownership, right? You take ownership for everything in front of you and everything around you, you take ownership. So that day, it was the day that I just proved to myself that my parents taught me what to do to do the job right, regardless of what it was going to sacrifice myself to make sure I do the job right and protect the people around me as I was supposed to do and assigned to do so. So I was you very thought that you were going to make the amount of money that you're making now, I, successful entrepreneur, running your own agency. No, I, I, knew I, was I, was gonna make money. I knew I was going to make money because, you know, because I knew I had to make it. Real full. Look, my parents are getting older, man. They're from Mexico, Michoacan. I knew I had to make it. For them, I just didn't think I was going to even get paid 40, 50, 60, 100 grand a month. I never thought that type of income, you know, you don't know how to expect those numbers. But yeah, I just, I just didn't think it was going to be like this, role, to be honest with you. That picture that, that, that Matt is showing in Hawaii, right? With you and your yeah. family. My, but yeah, those are my two oldest boys. I got, I have my oldest son, Alexander. Can I tell you guys a quick little story about my son, Alexander, if you guys don't mind? Yeah, of course. So, you know, when I, used to, so before I got in the business, I used to tell people like, man, I can't wait. I want to be self-employed. You know, I want to be my own business owner because I want to take my kids to school. I don't want somebody to tell me what time to take my, my son to school. You know, if I could be there for the first day of school or not. So my son's first day of school was Monday and uh, I took him to school. Beautiful feeling, right? The second day was just Tuesday. Less parents show up because it's already the second day, right? So there I am. So my system now is I take my son to school and I have to wait in line. So guys, I'm in a suit with all the moms, with all the senoras, all right? I'm in line with all these women, guys. And I'm, my wife is back at home with other, my three-year-old and my two-year-old, my daughter and my son. And I'm in line. 
And I'm sitting there, guys, getting really emotional, almost crying because I'm thinking to myself, man, I've been saying this since I was 23. That I was going to take my kids to school. And I wasn't going to be there. So having that feeling of just like being not next to all these other women, because most of the men are out there working, guys. They're at their yep. jobs. Yep. Daddy's like right here. And I take my son in the Corvette. So we pull up in the Corvette. My son's like, my son, the, the second day is like, daddy, you can take me to school. I was like, yeah. He's like, can we go in the Corvette? I was like, of course, son, right? Throw the booster chair in there. And took him to school, guys. And I'm just like, <laughs> Wait a minute, Cor- Corvette in the booster. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. So it feels good. Bro. Oh, that's such a Mexican oh. thing to do, a Filipino thing to do, man. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> oh, man. All the senoras were watching you, man. The next time you need to, you need to take your wife, okay? <laughs> well, I, I, Alejandro, I can, I can relate to that because, you know, I, I've been with PHP Net for six years, but I've been in the industry for 22 and uh, I remember being a single father, and this is before Sheena, and uh, just being in an industry that allows you to control your schedule, that allows you to control your time, control your income. And I felt, I felt the same way, too, because, you know, I was, I was standing in line, and I was doing registration, and, 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 and um, I dedicate one day a week to pick up my kids at school to have lunch with them because I knew after, you know, junior high, they probably want to have lunch with me, they want to have lunch with their friends, and but in their, in, their, in their early middle school year, I'd always take, pick up the kids at 12 o'clock and, and drop them off and pick them up and pick them up again for lunch. And so what, what an amazing industry that, and, and so I, I want to ask you this question. When, when you're thinking about life insurance, I know you, your mom's got to be, I, I, when I ran across your mom at a uh, big event in Vegas a couple weeks ago, I told your mom, can I just say hello to the happiest woman of PHP? <laughs> 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 to have her two boys. Uh, 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 1.3, 1.4 million dollars of combined income together between the two of them retirement and just amazing thing that you and your brother represent. And, and Alejandro, a lot of guys in, in, in even my uh, team and Money Smart Movement, they say, man, I want to be the next Alejandro. I'm going to be the next Ricky. I want to be the next uh, Aguilar Brothers. You know? And so when you're looking at the life insurance industry <clears throat> and it's not something that's readily embraced by the multicultural community, why are, what are some of the stereotypes that you get from the Latino community, about why they don't get involved in the business. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you what my brother said, all right? So <laughs> my brother, you guys know Ricky has no filter, man. So, I, so, so my dad, I was very blessed because, uh, guys, my dad used to go to Mexico um, twice a year, one, one uh, for two months in, in June, right? When kids take vacation, and we used to go in December again. We used to go three months out of the year to Mexico. And my dad did three things uh, a little fun, Matt. He used to do, one, he used to pray right before we got on the trip because we used to go driving. Two, he used to put the money in our socks so in case we got hijacked out there because Mexico was a little crazy at times. He put money in our sock. And three, he said, you know what, son, if something ever happens to me, I have a life insurance. See, I heard that my whole entire life, twice a year from age you know, five, that I can remember, to 17. So I knew it was very important for us to make sure that we left something behind. But in our culture, as far as Latinos and minorities, a lot, look, Zapala and Matt, we're, we're, a lot of us millennials, our parents come from other countries. So when they come from other countries, they come from poverty. They come from being broke, no financial education, no understanding of why insurance is important. Um, thinking that, hey, you know what? We're going to work to the day that we die. So when they come to America, they're not talking about money. Guys, it's disrespectful in the Latino culture if we talk about money. You talk about money, it's disrespectful. You talk about death, Matt, and the Latino culture, we talk, it's sal. sal. Don't talk about muerte because... It's going to happen tomorrow, Kukui, right? <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, don't right. change it, bro. You can talk about boom, it's going to happen tomorrow if that happens, if you talk about it. So the lack of preparation, the lack of understanding, then the millennials come, they don't really understand the, the importance of it by the parents. because like, So that's two whole generations. That's the first generation coming to America, the parents, and the first generation born in America, or if not brought up in America, with the lack of our industry, brother, like the lack of the education as far as money. Yep. And so, you know, when you, when you think about people like ourselves that would say, yeah, insurance is important for other people, that's a taboo subject. Yep. So we had to, a lot of us, when I got started, man, it was like the typical 25 up married couples, Caucasian people that were in the industry, uh, 55, 60. So when people saw me, t- they look at this industry, they're like, bro, you crazy? Ricky used to tell me, bro, that's a, that's a Caucasian man business. You're Mexican, bro. Like, are you, are you serious? Like, it's not going to work. And, um, but, <laughs> but you know what? I, I, my first year license, guys, I didn't know how to, like, make the Latinos understand that insurance was important. Like, I just couldn't get through them. So I only made, like, 32000 
But then I figured out some things. Like I had a client of mine who passed away and I delivered over 519,000 mm. and it, it made it more real for me. But then my second year license, I made 161,000. And the reason for it though, was because I finally understood how my, my people were 100% blocking out the concept of insurance. Like most men, Matt and, and Rofo, they don't think insurance is important. They're like, no, because if I die, you know, my wife is, Sancho is going to receive the money. That, that's the, that, imagine Matt, that. You, one, know, like, you, you know what the Sancho is, Matt? You know what that's, that's, I, I don't know. That's uh, Sheena's boyfriend. Sancho, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, imagine, right. bro, like, Sancho's going to come Of course, it was Sancho. <laughs> I've met him yeah. many, sometimes I was Sancho. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to overcome that objection? You know how to overcome this, that objection? This pre-married. That's a life before. You how know? do you know, you know I want to hear yours a little bit. Because that's, <laughs> that, 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 that's the research. Like, I, I'm, I'm Salvadorian. I'm a Hispanic. So a lot of Hispanics will say, you know what? I don't want to buy a policy because I don't want to leave the money to the Sancho. You know how to overcome that objection? Here's what you tell them. Listen, sir, senor, pay attention, okay? The reason why you're going to get a policy is so your wife doesn't have to go and find a Sancho. That's exactly what I was going to say. The, the, that's, why, that's how you overcome it, Alejandro? Okay, yeah. keep going, keep going. Yeah, I say that. I tell, this, brother, that's exactly what I said. Look, sir, with all due respect, if you don't leave your wife set up, She's going to need somebody else to step up to the plate. And then Sancho is going to have to come into the plate if you don't step up. So if you don't do something about it, sir, then your wife is going to need some other man's help. So that's going to be your decision. That's what we have to overcome the objection. Yep. That's very crazy. But by the way, you know, Matt, I, I want to, you know, Alejandro says something very important. In a, in a, in a, and it's about the labels. You know, the labels. We've been put labels to, uh, to ourselves, meaning, um, you know, Alejandro, they told him because the school system was the way it is. They told him, you know what? You're not going to accomplish anything in your life because you don't know how to take the test. So many of us, we have labels. Oh, because you're a Filipino, or because you're a Hispanic, or because you're this, because you're, because you're whatever. You know, it's, we have these labels. And uh, there were some people put labels on Alejandro, and now he decided to change it. Many of us, we've been put labels. Uh, we're never going to accomplish anything in our life. Matt, have anybody give you a label to you? Like, uh, hey, you're military and uh, how you're going to do financial services. Have anybody put your label? Put label the worst you? is when your own kind gives you a label. Your own kind? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Bro. Unpack that. Unpack are, that. You, are you Filipino? This is, this, is, this is what the OG Filipinos say from the country. Not, not they were born here. Are you Filipino? I say, I'm Filipino. You're not really Filipino. I'm really <laughs> Filipino. My, my parents are both Filipino. You're not Filipino enough. You're not Filipino no, because you're born here. Can I even choose where I was born to be Filipino enough? It's not my fault I was born here. So even with inside the Filipino community, you have your little, you have your own little biases with inside, which is annoying. And by the way, do you see my team fill the Filipinos? <laughs> it's, it's the weirdest thing, right? You don't see a lot of Filipinos. Your oh. mom, your mom. I see your mom. <laughs> I see your mom. <laughs> Rodolfo, there's more Filipinos on your team than on my team. <laughs> By the way, I do have Filipinos. I do have Filipinos. Yeah, I do have uh, Filipinos in my team. But, but you know, it's crazy about the labels. Go ahead, Matt. Go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, you know, when, when I'm looking at this, I'm looking. For those of you who are watching this right now, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the PHV Agency YouTube channel. Uh, Alejandro, congratulations. We have 187 live viewers right now just on YouTube, and we're not even counting the, uh, the Facebook live. So thank you so much, you guys, watching this live on YouTube. Make sure you share this also with your Timeline, we share it on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Please share this as well. Um, when you're looking at Rodolfo Vargas, immigrant from El Salvador, you look, look at, uh, you look at uh, um, Alejandro, our guest today, and his family, the, the, the Alejandro and his uh, older brother, Ricky, which he recruited into the business. I want to ask you about that question, uh, Alejandro. Uh, uh, you know, we've, we've heard it many times, but I think for many purposes, a lot of our guys look to attract and bring into the business or become clients their older siblings or maybe their parents. How did you... For, for a lot, there's a lot of people that, that don't have, have not heard that story. How did you attract your older brother, Ricky, who was making more money than you? Oh, yeah. Uh, into the business. And now he's one of the uh, rock stars of PSU. He had his face on the side of the MGM Grand uh, building there alongside Rodolfo and I. Yeah. So um, remember, to, we talked about work ethic. Yep. So, so uh, guys, I used to get to the office at 8 a.m., leave at, you know, at the time, you know, 10, 11, 12, because I wasn't married. I had no kids. So I was, I was just grinding it out. I had to build my foundation for all the people out there who were single. You know, I would tell you, this is the best time of your life to go out there and build a strong foundation. So I was grinding out from eight to 11, 12, one. And then finally my girl, my wife now got pregnant. And so I realized I had to buckle down even more. 
So we started going, we started right. So I started working even more. So I worked even more. I would have my team and, um, you know, we keep them there late at night, practicing, drilling, rehearsing so they can learn all the scripts. I wanted them to learn. If, if hurry up and fast forward their, their, their success and what mm -hmm. it was like me. So finally, guys, um, one day I talked to Rodolfo in Puerto Vallarta. Remember that conversation I had in Puerto Vallarta? I do. I remember like if it was yesterday, we were, we were at the, we were at the, we were swimming. We were yeah. swimming. We were having yeah. that conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. And uh, but you also had, you had two conversations with me that impacted my life. One was not about quitting when we're in the water, and the second one was about how to take my business serious. And uh, we're outside, and you said, "If you do this, you're gonna make ten grand in a month." I said, "Okay, if you say so, let's do it." So sure enough, I go back, I apply, and I make six thousand five hundred in January two thousand sixteen. My then in two thousand uh, uh, February two thousand sixteen, Matt took this out. My brother, I used to live with Ricky in his in his condo, right? He had the key to the mailbox. And so back then, since years when I was so broke back then, I could not get direct deposits because then Chase Bank will eat up everything with my overdraft. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got to get checks, bro. So I, I know checks. the problem you're talking about there, Rodolfo. It's, it's probably just a you issue. I don't know what's going on. There. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm just getting checks, bro. And, uh, and so I used to tell Ricky, so that month I made 12 grand. But before I made the 12,000 that week, it was like a $5,000 check. I called Ricky. I said, Ricky, can you do me a favor? He's like, yeah, bro. I said, I don't know what my check is. Can you please open up my check no, and tell me what it is? He <laughs> says, yeah, for sure. You know we know by Wednesday or what our checks will be on Friday. So it opens up the check, $5,000 doesn't say much. He goes, here you go. <laughs> then again, next week, like 4000 Guys, I end up making like 12000 in February. Ricky doesn't say nothing. Nope, because you know Ricky, he's the older brother, man. He's making over like close to 200000 So Ricky's like, whatever, bro, like little brother. Finally, you know. And then, uh, so in March, I make 18,000. So one of the checks was like 6,500. And he finally says, good job. <laughs> I'm like, all right, took you long enough, right? <laughs> yeah. Friday, man, like another $5,000 check. Point being, after like the fourth check, he says, good job, little brother, I'm proud of you. Now we're talking about Ricky, who doesn't, is not impressed by nothing, right? So I get a call one day. And then, uh, so guys, there was work ethic, work ethic. And I had to make the money as well because, you know, when you want to recruit somebody with a higher identity who knows how to make money, you got to you gotta match or surpass whatever they're doing. Yeah. So my brother calls me and says, Rick, and he goes, Alejandro, I'm like, I'm about to be in the office race, like probably about seven o'clock. I'm getting out of the shower, seven o'clock in the morning. I said, what's up, Rick? He says, I need to do, I need, uh, I need to ask you a question. I said, what's up, bro? I thought he was going to say, hey, man. You know, let's go into business together because my brother had other projects. I said, what's up, bro? I said, whatever you need, I got you. He says, you know, bro, I've been doing a lot of thinking. How does this PHP crap work? He used another word, right? <laughs> I was like, this has been two years and a half, Matt. Two years and a half. <laughs> so how does this PHP crap? I said, I said, I said, bro, if I were to show you, you're going to freaking love it. He goes, all right, I'll be there later on today. I said, okay, perfect. He calls me. I'm never going to forget because I'm bringing Erica with me, too. I said, yes, bring her with me. Uh, they bring me Carl Jr. He's like, are you hungry? I'm like, yeah, they bring me Carl Jr. Carl Jr. Or is it Carl Jr.? All right, the Carl Jr. Yeah, was, you, know, you know, at least BJ's or something like that. Oh, oh, Carl Jr., bro, uh, right? We're, we're ballers on a budget. So then uh, my brother sits in front of me. I show him the presentation. He says, this is what you've been doing? I'm like, this is what I've been doing. He goes, this right here is what you've been doing. I said, yes, bro, I've been telling you. He goes, starts laughing. He's like, how much is it? I was like, 199. Pulls out his debit card. Throws it. He's like, he literally slides, like, put me in the system. He goes, and Erica's like, yeah, you know what? Um, and I want a pulse too. Wow. Guys, so I, we insured Erica on the spot. Ricky gets started with Erica. Um, and I said, guys, do you trust me? I tell Ricky, do you trust me? He goes, of course, you're my little brother. I know you never won't screw me over. I said, no, no, do you trust me? He's like, of course, bro. You're not going to screw me over. You're my brother. I said, no. Do you trust me as your coach in business? Mm. He says, well, Ricky's always like, <laughs> he goes, takes a big breath. He says, I trust you. <laughs> I'm like, cool. They get started in April. By May, they make $10,000 for their, their first month license. And now, if you guys know now, now they're making 950 grand a year. He's, and right now, man, he's, he's number one on the leader's bulletin and just absolutely smashing it. And guys, man, round, round of applause for Alejandro, man. The way, the way to not stop. Thank you. you know, a, lot, a lot of people, the biggest mistake when people do in that situation, Alejandro, they'll stop. Well, my older, my older brother's not joining, you know, he's not my client or, 
in biz with me and they'll wait instead of you just having, like you just said earlier, work ethic. And, and you know what, man? Can I tell you? It's a great story about working with the family. You mm -hmm. know, let me put it to you like this. That's a dream to work with the family. Yeah. That's a, I'm working with my brother. Guys, my, I took me years for my brother to do the business. And let me put it, Mar, uh, Marcelo, Marcelo Alejandro was a great inspiration for Marcelo. I'm telling you, you know, he's giving me props about the, the conversation we had with Puerto Vallarta. Alejandro was a great inspiration for Marcelo. And to work with the guys, I have a brother. He has a brother. It's a, it's a dream to be able to work as a, as a family. It was a dream come true. Yeah. It's a dream come true. And, uh, and Alejandro and uh, Ricky, they're setting a great example on how to work as a family. Many people are working. At, look, Patrick is working. His, his sister does a business too. You know, it's, it's a family. It's, it's, a, it's a dream come true. So phenomenal job, Alejandro. Matt. What else do you have over there? What what oh, topics do you have today? I, I'm, I'm just going. Where's where's that? Uh, where's Marcelo right now in cash flow? Marcelo is at quarter of a million. A quarter of a million. So on, on top of you, are what you're at one six one seven right now. The what? Where we at right now? You so combined income with you and him, you're like a one eight oh, one nine two million two million. Two million. <laughs> Phenomenal, man. Phenomenal. It's, it's, so you got for those of you watching this, you got two brothers here, Latino brothers, in business over seven figures, multiple seven figures combined. And uh, the crazy part, they're just getting started. They're just, they're just getting a, a clue at how great they are and how great they're gonna become. Um, speaking of which, I, I got some. I got something else I, I like to talk about. It's a very deep topic. I think it's, um, it's something that needs to be said because you know a lot of people, sadly, um, are getting hurt. And it's, uh, it's a crisis. I think that's happening, happening all over America today. And uh, if you're not careful, you can be hurt by this too. What am I talking about? Milk crate challenge. <laughs> milk crate challenge. <laughs> milk crate challenge is what I'm talking about, man. What is going on with this milk crate challenge? Uh, yeah, I, I uh, hope. I hope. Alejandro, have you tried this yet? No, brother. I'm, I'm going to buy the stock, though. Whoever sells those milk carts, man, I'm buying that stock, bro. I want a piece of that stock. <laughs> the worst part. Like, look at, this, look at this picture right here. This guy falls over <laughs> Milk can crate. you post a video or no? Because people don't know about this. Can you can you do in a video? There uh, is a this not, someone. But no, you, no, can no, I do videos right now? No, yeah, no videos because we have to okay. pay for the rights. Yes. But uh, <laughs> so <laughs> funny, by the way. This is so you know, funny. But this is crazy. You know, people are stumbling, you know, all this, all these things. I'm sure if you guys just Google YouTube, you'll find a ton of milk crate challenge fails. But here's the serious part though, man. Uh, as much as we might be entertained by it. Um, here's the serious part. What is this? Three people shot dead in U.S. Contra U.S. Get out of here. That's the craziest thing. Yeah, Tiger brought this up, and three people, including a teenage girl, were killed by a drive-by shoot as people were filming a milk crate challenge for TikTok. What? Right, so, so what? What is going on with this this uh, uh, milk crate challenge, man? I, what What are you guys getting on your end when you guys see this? What's going through your head when you see this type of stuff? Oh man. Roll for you, I'm man. <laughs> I'm just telling you, like, uh, my parents, immigrants from El Salvador, were to see me doing that kind of stuff, they would be the ones shooting me, okay, for doing this crazy. They would thank me right away. It's like this. I mean, uh, entrepreneurs, you know, entrepreneurs, I mean, uh, it's kind of entertainment to watch, <laughs> but uh, uh, we need to, uh, you know, these guys who know what they need, they need life insurance. That's, what, that's, what <laughs> that's, right. that's basically I, what they need. Yeah. So, huh? I mean, you're, you're seeing people for entertainment, you're seeing people fall from literally eight, nine, 10 feet, 11 feet in the air. And, and you have your body weight. And if your body's not conditioned to fall, you're going to, you're going to, and you're not flexible, you're going to, you're going to break something. Oh yeah. And so, and, and it may not show up right away. I mean, people are landing right on these crates or getting like that guy's bent over backwards on a crate, but he's falling his whole body weight. That might affect him like a couple of days later, like internal bleeding and, would you do it? Would you do it? Would you do it? Would you do? It? Would you do it, Alejandro? Would you do it? I've done something called the Superman challenge, the, the Iron Man uh, water skin Aruba, where we go up in the air, and that hurt. I could just imagine this, bro, where they're falling on dirt. You know what I mean? And, and, I think that your mom will come and spank you right away. Yeah. She will come and spank you. <laughs> Don't do things like that, man. Now, but you know what, guys? The way I look at it is like, look, I understand people are doing it for fun, for trending. Some people want to do it just because you know, you know, they're YouTubers or whatever the case might be. You know, just to have some fun, but. At the same time, it just goes to show that, look, let's, let's be very honest. 
if we had more people who had more development, self-development, mentors, entrepreneurs, if we taught a little bit more, if we just, for example, guys, I'm from the hood, right? I grew up uh, uh, in, uh, in Oswald, Virginia, Bakersfield, California, which is, I grew up to one of the most ghetto schools in high, in, here in Bakersfield. And uh, guys, we do, we do it a lot of dumb crap just because there is nobody in their life to influence us, you know? Um, and so when I see a lot of my community, we do, they, they do dumb things. That's why they get into gangs. You know what I mean? That's why they, 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 like a lot of these guys, you know, they don't have mentors. They don't have coaches. They don't have somebody to say, you know what, man, you have a better future. Watch yourself. Like, don't be doing stupid things. And uh, there's just, there's not people out there to really kind of show them a better way. They're just, you know, that's why a lot of people say, if I don't go to school, I got nothing going for me. A lot of these guys that just, they feel like they got nothing else going for them. So they're, they're willing to do whatever the hell it takes just to have some fun and get some attention, you know? So that's why, like, for me, it's like, well, we, we need to recruit, man. We got to be able to make an impact on people's lives because yep. a lot of people are getting themselves into trouble because of the lack of mentorship, lack of guidance, you know? So that's I, my- I, like, I like where you're going there, Alejandro. You know, what goes to my mind is when I see a milk crate channel like that. I mean, sure, initially it's entertaining. Then it starts taking over. And the next thing you know, people are consumed by this stuff just because they want a bunch of followers and subscribers and commenters on their social media profile. And, um, you know, when, when I'm looking at this and I'm looking at, okay, number one, is that our unemployment checks at work? <laughs> is, is that, is that what, what they're doing with their unemployment check? Is that our unemployment? Check? Cause they're now, because the thing is, if you complete the challenge, you win the money, right? Right. So, so the there are people getting paid. There are people, there is somebody paying them to embarrass yeah. themselves in the computer. That's what, that's what it yeah. is. Right. But they don't get money if they fall. They only get money if they have the, to, to go, to go right. and complete it. The, the second thing is that there's a very deep comment. I, I can't remember which profile it was, but it was a very deep comment. It says, it's funny. It's funny that we can all get together and laugh and be entertained with and laugh at each other fall. But we can't come together and make some bread. Wow. We'd rather, we'd rather laugh at each other and see each other fall versus taking the same time and energy and actually create new skills to build something that will last us for the rest of our life versus just this craze that probably will last for another 30 days. Wow. So that, that's a deep comment because, because think about this, a lot of people coming throughout this pandemic and, and everybody's arguing right now about masks and vaccines and this, this, and that are uh, income. Let's, let's, let's take a look at this um, insurance news that article here real quick. Let me, let me, let me show this. If you guys subscribe to insurance news net, uh, this is a, a great trade uh, trade magazine. I love reading um, month in uh, month in month out, but you know, the, the Oracle of Omaha, which is a uh, Warren Buffett, uh, looking into his crystal ball, he can't necessarily predict the long-term impact that it has on his economy. So one thing is how this pandemic, this shutdown, these lockdowns are still affecting supply chains to this day. I think in Chicago, all the Disney stores are getting shut down. So silently, these stores and these malls are getting shut down and shut down and shut down. They're, they're slowly uh, and, and, uh, closing their, their locations, going to online. And uh, it says here in, in, in the bold print, it says Buffett and Munger, Charlie Munger, both said, uh, which is uh, Charlie Munger's uh, uh, Buffett's uh, partner and um, a mentor when he was coming up in the business, both said U.S. regulators should do more to restrict the amount of gambling and financial markets by limiting how much investors and banks can borrow on margin, which is um, putting a lot of uh, uh, um, strain on our economic system. Because not only do we have the economic system strained with pandemic, but you have the markets lending money, lending money, lending money, lending money. And he says, hey, there's, there needs to be a limit to how much you borrow. Because, Rodolfo, let me ask you this question. If you're constantly spending money on, on credit card, you call the credit card company, right, Rodolfo, Alejandro? You call the credit card, hey, man, I spent more than my limit. Can you increase my limit? And the credit card comes, okay, one time. And they say you max out that limit. Hey can, I, can I, hey, can I extend my credit again? Can you increase my credit limit? I'm good for it. When does it stop? You know, is, is that a healthy thing for the end? Like the country's doing it. But from an individual, Rodolfo, is that a healthy thing to do? So, so you need to look at it like this. You know, when, when I do the presentation, I talk about credit cards. We talk about um, an average family carry 3.5 credit cards. And they have over $16,000 in credit card debt. Okay? That's an average family. Because how easy is to get in credit card debt? You know how many of us would receive in, um, have you ever received these letters that we receive? And I receive a bunch of letters. Open it, open it, open it, and um, opening credit card, opening credit cards. And the thing is so easy to get into debt. You know, um, we are so easy to get into debt. And since we're talking about the challenge, and then we're talking about credit card debt, here's what happened. And then we're talking about Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett says this, if you see 
everybody doing one thing, do the opposite. That's how you become <laughs> yeah. Okay? If you see everybody getting into credit card debt, do the opposite. That's how you're going to become successful. If you see everybody doing something, the, actually the right thing to do is to do the opposite. So um, so easy to get into credit card debt. It's so easy to get into debt. And then it's so difficult to get into debt. Now, you, if you want to keep going deep on this one, what is credit card? The other one is student loan debt. There is, guys, people before getting married, before getting married, average, I was, I was reading about this, right? Kids before getting married, they have close to eighty to $100,000 in, in debt. Credit card debt and student loan debt before getting married. Imagine wow. you're getting married, you're on a date. You go to a date, you're in your sushi. Okay, you're in your sushi. <laughs> wearing this dinner, you say, Honey, before we get married, how much is your debt? Man, over six figures between both of you? Before, before both of us? Mm. Uh, and then the wedding? What, 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 then a tough question ask? what a tough question to ask when you're dating. Uh, how's your credit? How's your debt? How's your income? <laughs> wow. Hey, I think it's, it's time for us to start realization that we need to uh, we need to stop doing what just everybody's doing. You know, maybe we need to do something different, like maybe starting our own business, maybe learning a new skill, selling some insurance, maybe, maybe, right? We need to start doing something else. Wow. Bro, Alejandro, what's, what was it like for you to sit down with your with your now now life? Well, if any, was there any financial conversations brought up? Was there any uh, you know, conversation about the business? Because I know, you know, you're already in it. Yeah, so when, uh, very interesting, brother, because uh, when I was dating her, we were getting serious. I told her one thing. I said, look, I know you want to go to school for criminal justice. I, I understand. I said, uh, but... I said, there's a lot of guys, my, my wife is very beautiful, very attractive. You know, she's the type of girl that's 40, 50, 60, 100 guys in her inbox saying, hey, beautiful, hey, gorgeous, right? <laughs> so I told her one thing. I said, look, I said, and this is before I made my money. I was it's like, like, it's like Rodolfo's inbox. <laughs> right. Exactly like that, right? Now the question I, is, are you, are you jealous, Mexican? <laughs> are you, <laughs> are you I'll, machista? I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you my answer right now. So this is, this is what I told her. <laughs> I told her this. I said, look, um, you're very beautiful. Cause I used to, guys, we used to make dates like at nine, nine o'clock, eight o'clock at night to go watch a movie before she was my wife. Right. She's like, well, like, yeah, I'll, I'll go see you like at nine, but then an, in an interview or an appointment, you should show up like at eight 30 and I'd be like, sorry, I'm going to run it. So around 10 o'clock, I see the text messages calls and I'm still running my appointment. I'm not even answering the phone. Right. And she says, and I was, she's like, my makeup is off. I'm so mad. You told me tonight, nine o'clock to go watch a movie. It's 10 30. And I would call her and say, hey, my bad. You know, I, I apologize. I just, I an appointment walked in. She's, and I said, look, she used to get very mad. I said, look, look, let me tell you something. Anna. You're beautiful. You're gorgeous. You know, I said, there's a lot of other guys out there that will go and pick you up at eight o'clock, nine o'clock, like no problem. They'll be there another hour before. I said, and if you want those guys, by all means, when they get off of work at five o'clock, they'll be back in the garage drinking beer with their compas. And it's all good. You can have that life. I said, I'm not that guy. I said, I'm the guy who's going to travel the world. And whoever I marry, I'm going to travel the world with. I'm going to take care of their parents. I'm going to take care of my parents. And I'll have a badass life. I said, so if you want those guys, would you have a thousand of them in your inbox right now saying, hello, beautiful? By all means, go with them. But I'm not your guy then. And then she says, hurry up, right? <laughs> so I used to go, I said, yeah, man. I used to go, so I used to go swoop up and maybe we'd go watch a movie. But, you know, um, and guys, I'll tell you guys something. So. Um, so when that was happening, I told her, that I a boss move. Well, put it in the conversation below. Yeah, that's like, a, that was a boss move. Managing yeah. expectations up front, baby. Yeah. But, but, but Matt, if you want to go to the next level, you can say, or give me your password or give me your Instagram password. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I told, I, I told her, well, we're, we were not even boyfriend and girlfriend yet. We're just getting to know each other. So then I told her like, look, then I remember she ended up getting pregnant. I told her two things and this is probably not the right thing to say, but I said, I said, look, I said, I need you to understand one thing. And I learned this from Pat, because Pat told us a gen. I said, look, if you, if you want to have a happy life, I said, I'm going to ask you for one favor. I said, respect three things. Respect my biblical beliefs. That's where our principles and morals come from. I said, number two, you respect my business and you respect my parents. Because I said, no matter what, I'm going to bust my butt until I can take care of my parents. So if you can respect those three, I'll give you the life. I still designed from Pat. I'll give you the life that 50 men together won't be able to give you. I said, however, though, if you try to get in the way of my beliefs, you can try to get in the way of my business and try to get in the way of me taking care of my parents. I said, you and me are going to have war. Yeah. I said, 
And I'm, I'm be honest with you, you don't want to go to war with me. Yeah. So which one do you choose? Do you yep. choose to support me, to, to support my beliefs, support my businesses, uh, uh, allow me to support my parents? Or do you want to go to war with me? Because I want to give you a good life. Which one do you choose? So that's my wife. My wife, she's not my business partner, but she's a supportive wife. Yep. That's why my wife is, guys, I, my wife is the most incredible human being, incredible mother. She freaking loves me and I love her because, guys, we, we, we know why we're in the game. So when I'm working late at night, I get no complaints. I, if you guys watch me on Instagram, I come home sometimes at 11 o'clock at night. My kids are still up. I'm having some awesome dinner. And, you know, I go back home and, you know, massages and we go to sleep. Like, you know, little angels. But, and I see the food, too. Sometimes I see the, the Instagram stories. The food that, that you could buy. You know what? That's an inspiring story, uh, Alejandro, because um, a lot of us, because you also... You not only work hard, you also bring the bread to the home. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, a lot of a lot of people they wonder. Uh, my wife doesn't support me. Yeah, but but you're not bringing the the hundreds of thousands of dollars that you're bringing home. So kudos to you for doing that as a, as an spouse. Good job, phenomenal job. So, so, so I, I, word word to the wise: if you are making declarations to your family about your bold dreams and goals, you better come through. You better come through because a lot of people have some bold declarations. And uh, their 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 mouths are writing checks that their work ethic cannot cash. Wow! <laughs> I, I, if if we weren't on a podcast, you'd not know, be saying something. MSN. I know, I know. <laughs> I thought you were. I oh, Matt, so I'm not the same. You might be saying something. Else. He told me the other day. But Matt, okay. What else do you have over there in the top? By the way, by the way. Yeah. With, what else do you have there? We got we got something special. We are in Newswire, PR Newswire, just uh, 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 published here as of wow. today, nine o'clock this morning. That PHV agency celebrating here 10,000 agents in Las Vegas. Uh, congratulations. Yeah, baby. Everybody, uh, if you guys go to this, we'll put the link in the uh, we'll put the link in the uh, chat box. Hey, can I read it? Can you read it? Can you read a paragraph there? Can you yeah. read a paragraph? Uh, PHP Spectacular is the most talked about anticipated industry event of the year, and it was one of the first large-scale live private events since the reopening of Las Vegas, says Patrick B. Davis, CEO and founder of PHP Agency. We wait, 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 repeat that phrase is, is yeah, was um, one of the first, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, right, right. So, um, and was one of the first large scale live private events since the reopening of Las Vegas as PHP for you. Right. And awesome. so, yeah. And so the, the, a, a the top performing and innovative financial services company, PHP has assisted in the individuals from all walks of life, like us, by the way, Zapala, Alejandro, uh, me and myself, achieving success in life, in, in the life insurance business. And, and uh, our chief reputation officer, uh, Maral Keshishian said this, we have taken into consideration the risk of bringing people together post the pandemic restrictions and prepared ourselves for the possibility that the event could be canceled. Because that's what we we're worried about, guys, right? We we're worried, yeah. are they gonna pull the plug on us? Luckily, no new spreads or restrictions other than mandating mask wearing interfere with our event and to ensure an extra layer of safety measure for our agents and our communities. Our team provided all attendees with masks and sanitizer throughout the event as well as the ability to disclose social distancing preferences. We're so glad we took a chance and we're able to successfully host the most spectacular event for our agents. By the way, Matt, I need to tell you something. I was so uh, impressed by everybody from the company, everybody respected, everybody Everybody was uh, following instructions and uh, everybody was uh, following all the instructions. I'm really like how disciplined is the PHP people, by the way, how di disciplined the company is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy when, when, you, when you're seeing, um, let's, go to, uh, uh, let's go to Alejandro's, uh, back to his Instagram here real quick, because you know, sometimes people don't see the magnitude with you know, having the MGM grant filled with that many people. This is, uh, uh, this, this is the stage. Nice. Right, Alejandro on stage talking about his story in front of, you know, close to ten thousand people there. You know, oh, let me go back. That's uh, well, that's the yep. same. That's the same one. You just have to go to the next picture. Yeah, that's right. Um, you said, uh, boom. Here it is. Boom. Nice. Nice, bro. That's a nice three piece, man. Thank you. Bro. That's pretty nice. You know, look at that. He's telling the story. That's his mom, by the way, in the background. Yep. 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 There it is. Took you one year to take your test, huh, Alejandro? Oh, look at that picture, man. Look at that. Is that what we're talking about, man? That is crazy, guys. 
<laughs> and Nikki Jam, did you guys? Let me ask you a question. What did you guys think when Nikki Jam was performing, and you're just sitting there soaking it all in, guys? What were you guys thinking when you guys saw Nikki Jam with the lights and the show taking place? Unbelievable. Yeah, it was, I was crazy. You, you know what's crazy? His was crazy. Um, it was um, oh, look, this look, just look, beginning. Look at you on the screen, man. Look at you on the screen, oh, bro. Look at that. <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes. By the way, you crush it, Alejandro. You crush it over there that. on the stage. Appreciate that. I man. love it, man. I can't I believe it, guys. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't when we were there, when I when I literally had to sit back. You know what they were saying? I don't know if you guys have seen when people have to put their phones down and kind of sit back and just Patrick talks about it. What's the word when you just see the moment? You, I looked around, I saw the stage, I saw I looked behind me, I saw the light show, I saw Nicky Jam performing. I said, I cannot believe this is the same company that we've been building together the last couple of years. I just, I said, I can't believe this is PHP. I would just, I just can't believe it guys. It, it was oh. a surreal moment. It's the same surreal moment I had to with, uh, with uh, Kobe Bryant because our event was the last large scale event he did sadly before he passed away. Cause uh, he did our event in August and sadly passed away the following, you know, a few months after that. And then president George Bush, you know, um, I don't know if you remember that. Remember when uh, that year I was hosting and uh, President Bush got off and I sat in, sat in the same chair in the former president. I remember. <laughs> oh, good. I was like, what? I mean, just, just to think that uh, we're just we're just on this point of explosive growth and uh, we are recognizing how powerful we all can be together. You know, the, the, the exciting thing about, you know, our company is that we're all united at the top. Although you might hear in the director's meeting, we're at each other so because we're so competitive, we're calling each other out and up. But at the end of the day, behind closed doors, we all know we're breaking bread together. We're competing. We're doing each other's conference calls behind closed doors. There's no games. Uh, there's no there's no poaching of agents, you know, to get from one organization and all that lowbrow stuff that you hear in other uh, 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 companies that, that happened, especially, I, me I remember when I was in the insurance industry, uh, before PHP agency, cause I was just a personal producer and a lot of the guys that had agencies, they don't ever want to bring their guys to the large events. I'm like, well, why don't you bring your people here? And I said, what? To keep them away from guys like you. I said, what, what do you mean? Cause guys like you, they're stereotyping me now. And guys like us that had agencies. Well, guys like you end up stealing my people. Wow. We like, don't have to anybody. So why stereotype? You talk you're talking about labels earlier, Rodolfo. That's part of, that's part of the labels with inside the insurance industry. So Alejandro, let me ask you this question. Of course, yeah. now that you're uber successful, you get agents all across the country. Um, and you get, I, I'm sure just like everybody else that's licensed, you get solicited all the time all to time. come to a company. We'll give you free leads. We'll give you a high contract. Da, 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 da. What keeps you here at PHP? You, you know what? Um, one, this is a, the funny thing. These other companies say, you don't have to recruit. I, I hear that. I'm like, you don't have to recruit. I'm like, and hey, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I, and that, that upsets me because I'm like, bro, you know, first of all, they're like leads. I'm like, my family doesn't know how to freaking call an insurance company and what to ask for. It's families like my family that need people like me who are bold enough to sit in front of them and say, sir, ma'am, this is why you need insurance. Like, let me give you an example, man. I had a client of mine. So there was a girl and, uh, you know, she goes and I said, she, she, she could sign up to my program. She doesn't do much for four months. She just sit in my office. She would just come to my office. And, you know, she, she had two kids. And I said, it's time to go meet your dad. Like, she didn't want to go meet her dad. So let's go meet your dad. She says, no, 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 no. I don't want to go meet my dad. My dad's crazy. Finally, my brother's going for a promotion. And she says, you know what? I want to help him out. I said, okay, no problem. I said, let's go help. You want help, Ricky? He goes, yes. He goes, um, let's go meet my dad. We go meet his dad. I walk into his man's house. He says, what the, in Spanish, what do you come steal from me, huh? And I said, everything, sir. He says, what? I said, I'm just kidding. Can I take a seat? He's like, well, you're already here. And we did, he had to take a seat. I sit down in his, in his kitchen table. This man is talking crap, right? He says, are you a Trump fan? Right? He just starts attacking me, right? I'm hey. having I'm having a good time because these guys remind me of my uncles. Like, bro, you could not hurt my feelings, man. You sound just like my uncles, man. So I can relate to him. We started, after a while, we're laughing. He's kind of trying to bully me a little bit, but I, I can take it, you know. Uh, he reminds me of my uncles. And then um, I said, sir, can I ask you a question? Like, I don't need life insurance. I said, sir, which one of your kids can run the business like you? He says, none of them. They're all lazy. You know, typical Hispanic man is not going to give no credit to the kids, right? And then he says, 
I said, sir, so the day that you told me you came from Mexico, Michoacan to America to build a business and the day that you die, the business world is going to die with you. He said, sir, then you might as well just stay in Mexico, man. Milk cows, milk cows for a living, eat the tacos. The food's much better out there. You should just sit out there. If you're going to come over here, not, you know, leave it when the day you die, everything dies with you. Yeah. He says, well, which one should I effing buy in Spanish words? Yeah, that's right. And then I, and I started, and I started, I, we started life. I said, which one do you want? So he chooses an IUL, $500,000 policy, cash value. Two years later, I get receive a phone call. My, my clients are getting murdered. Ugh. I show, so I come back from um, Maryland. I show up to, back to Cali. I go up, the whole family's there. They have banda, they have music. There's about 100, almost 200 people in this velorio where all the family comes together. I go and I, and I, and I sit down. I start crying. It's my first time my client passes away. I, I get on my knees. I, you know, the lady can't even get up. She has her daughter's casket and her husband's casket. I grab her. I start I'm crying and I'm holding on to her and I'm crying and I'm crying. Like, guys, I can't even talk, right? And I say, look, your husband loved you so much that there's a reason why he put me here. Your, love, your husband loved you so much that God put me here for a reason. And I said, your husband, dead or alive, was always going to take care of you. So what I realized, guys, is a lot of the friends, my uh, friends and family, guys, they don't realize about this industry. If there's not people who are bold enough. A lot of these companies say, oh, you don't have to sit down with your friends and family. Like, how dare you say that to me? Yep. How dare you say I don't have to sell with my friends and family? Those are the first people I should take care of. 100%. We should have, what, just because you're not audacious enough? Just because you're not brave enough to sit down with your friends and family? Because you won't stand, for, you just want it, what, uh, easy fruit? What, I'm sorry, I'll sit down with these families. I'll sit down with these families. I'm not afraid cause just because you're a little chicken, because you're like, I don't want to make somebody uncomfortable. I'll talk to your family then if you don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to insure your family? I'll insure them then. That's number one. And number two, if I don't get recruited like these guys, you don't have to recruit, then an East Sider, oil field worker who sleeps with tattoos, who's called stupid his entire life, gets stuck in the oil rigs if a person doesn't recruit a person like me. So whenever people say, oh, you don't have to recruit, I said, bro, get, get out of here with that. And three is the mentorship and the leadership. Come on, guys. You guys know Patrick's like a, he, he's like, for some reason, he can do like prophecies, right? He says something, boom, it happens. Says something, Boom, it happens. And when he says he's going to change the world, he says he's going to bring change. And, you know, that we're going, to be, we're going to be the biggest, powerful, most financial service industry in the company, in the industry. You know, I believe it, guys. Let, let's let's look at this. You know, uh, I'm glad you said something uh, around those lines, because what you serve, Alejandro, what you serve, Rodolfo, is the role of a mentor. People that would never otherwise enter this industry had not been for you would be st stuck. Like, I would have been stuck in the military. Yes, sir. And I would probably came back if, if, it, if, I, if I didn't have half a body, I'd probably come back with at least a minimum half a mind. Rodolfo, I mean, uh, 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 Adam Sosnick told me something very profound. Rodolfo, you don't know this. He said something behind closed doors to me about you, Rodolfo, which is uh, uh, Sosnick from uh, PBD Podcast and runs uh, uh, Valley yeah. Economics. He said, I wonder where a guy like Rodolfo would be had it not been for PHP. An immigrant from El Salvador working loss prevention. <laughs> where, where would a guy like Rodolfo be had it not been for somebody boldly pick up the phone, calling your dad and, and keeping up a follow-up list and following up with you, Rodolfo, and still work together with you and getting mentored by our now CEO, our, our CEO, P, uh, Patrick and David, who's now just crushing it on, on, on many other projects he's working on. Because I can tell you, I can tell you that. And I can give you, I can ask you a question too about mentorship too. Yep. Um, you know, uh, I was telling you earlier about the interview that Patrick did with uh, this guy that is a communist. Okay, <laughs> He's a self-proclaimed -proclaimed communist. He's a teacher, uh, I believe community college in uh, Riverside. Okay. And um, he asked him, Patrick asked him a question. Okay. He asked him a question. He said, uh, there is a 20 year old guy listening to this. By the way, there might be a 20 year old guy listening to the story of Alejandro today. Or your story, Matt, that you went from being a Marine, your parents from Philippines, now becoming a multi seven figure income earner, successful guy in the company. Or somebody listening to Alejandro that are coming from the old rigs, listen to the message of today that says, you know what, I need to make a decision to become an entrepreneur. But Patrick has a question to this guy and said, uh, there is a 20 year old guy listening in here who will, and maybe that person have a capacity to become the next Jeff Bezos, okay? Or the capacity to become Jeff Bezos, or he says the capacity, maybe he can become the next Stalin. Stalin. He says, who do you think is gonna contribute the most? You know what the guy answered? The guy teaches, lives in the US, 
teaches in the University of Riverside. He says, uh, Stalin, I think that this guy will give a more contribution if it was to be, to, were to be a Stalin. In my mind, I'm, I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, I grew up with El Salvador. I know what it is to grow up in a place where there is war, 12 year war. I know what it is to, to do that. And, uh, and the, this guy is talking to Patrick who grew up in Iran, you know? But anyway, when the freedoms are taken away from people, you know, I don't know what I will be without a capitalistic system and uh, without mentorship, somebody who is still in myself, the capacity that he still never feel sorry for me. You know what the most powerful thing that Patrick did about me, he never felt sorry for me. So for you, Matt, for you, what does capitalism ha has done to you? You know, what is, you, you went from nothing, single father, successful entrepreneur now, what would you be without capitalism? You know, capitalism has saved my life. You know, when I, I never contextualize it to, you know, the typical rags, the richest store, but that's the economic system that we are all here. The biggest thing that frustrated me when I was in the military, because I knew what I did. I knew the missions I was on. I knew the things I did behind uh, uh, closed doors. And I knew the things I did without other higher ups in the military uh, ranking that I knew saved lives. And nobody would recognize me for it because I just wasn't doing it around the right eyeballs. And the guy that does the least, he does it around the right eyeballs. He's like, oh my gosh, this guy's awesome. And, and, and you know, in the back, you're, you're sitting in a formation, wait, 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 that guy's getting a word for that. How come nobody knows about what I'm doing? Where's the leader's bulletin for that? And so I, I realized very quickly in the military how much I was wired for capitalism and understand a meritocracy. And that's actually what, what I got exposed to. So I got exposed in the military to a meritorious promotion. So I took my own promotion under my hands. I proved myself amongst my other Marines in a, in a competition. And I, I stood out. I got meritorious promoted three times. And I didn't realize that the whole time. Those were the, the that was, that's the DNA of capitalism. That's the DNA of, 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 of starting a business. And so as a single father, uh, you talk about how, how capitalism changed. I remember pastors banging on the table as I was trying to recruit them. Kept banging on the table. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? I said, we financial services. We have all, multiple insurance companies that you can offer. It's a great injury. No, it's nothing. Why are you doing this? And he kept banging on the table to get my wife, get my wife. And I actually thought about it. I said, you know what? Had not been for somebody to recruit me to this industry, to set my own schedule, to control my own time, to be there for my children as a single father with custody of my kids, raising them from, from birth to 14, uh, 14 years old before I met Sheena. This industry, this country uh, allowed me to change my life. And people said, well, Matt, you know, you're brown. You know, you're, 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 you're the victim of racism. I said, what? Victim of what? I'm not a victim of nothing. I'm a victim of laziness. Mm. I'm a victim of, of bad decisions. I'm a victim of ignorance because there's only one color I'm seeing today, which is the color of green. And there's only one race I care about today, and that's the human race. And if I'm not improving the human race, if I'm not putting green in your pocket, then I am no use to you, regardless of the color outside my skin, on the top of my skin. So quite frankly, it's, it's allowed me to, uh, to raise my children and give the lifestyle to my wife who would actually went to school for finance without realizing that why I realized the same corporate finance, not personal finance, two, two completely different things. So, you know, when I look at life today, not just money, forget money, forget, uh, you know, the, the trips and, and the cars and the homes and the travel. And I just look at today that I, capitalism made me think that I could do anything. That's what capitalism made me do. And then I have a system that allows me to express that more importantly, a PHP agency platform allows me to put my, to my mouth, my work ethic, as Alejandro was saying earlier, to prove it. I love it. I love it because you know what's another thing? Uh, people think that you become an entrepreneur to become rich. There's a misconception about capitalism. People think Alejandro is doing this business to become rich. Riches is a byproduct. Guys, I'm not an immigrant. Guys, I'm an immigrant from El Salvador. We don't come to America. Oh, I'm going to come to the U.S. because I want to become multimillionaire. No way. That's the last thing I have in my mind. Immigrants don't come into the U.S. Hey, I'm going to go rich, become rich. No, it's like we become because there is a big purpose. Maybe something is going on in our country that we, we cannot fix. We cannot do anything about crime or socialistic, communist, communist type of society. So it's interesting. And by the way, every time that Alejandro has spoken today, he's been talking about how many people has been helping. Yep. His brother, 
his family, that he's been protected. You, Sapala, uh, 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 Matt, you're talking about, man, your kids, your family. How much, by the way, I'll be watching your videos on YouTube, how much value you're bringing to people. Money shows the by product. Yep. By the way, I, uh, I recommend people to watch this video. I was, I was watching this video and I was just, damn, how somebody can uh, believe in that? But anyway, that's my point of view, right? So I pass it to you, uh, uh, Matt, uh, maybe another question to Alejandro. You know, I, I was thinking about, you know, what you just said earlier about the, who is giving more, who will give more? Or Jeff Bezos with Amazon or Stalin. So I, I decided to look up Stalin. Oh, just, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. So let's take a look. For the people that don't know who Stalin is, okay, he was he was uh, he was part of the Axis forces in World War II. Okay, uh, a politician of Mar uh, uh, to the Marylands, but Stalin uh, had little uh, family, private life. Okay, he was a dictator. Okay, he was a dictator uh, in Russia. Okay, and so now. Now, his, his biggest accomplishment, let's check this out. His biggest accomplishment is this. Now, we love Amazon, right? But his biggest accomplishment is industrialization of a country, which when he assumed control in 1928 was nobly backward by com com uh, comparison with leading industry nations of the world like America. But here's a problem, though. Here's a problem. Amid these formidable uh, achievements was one major disadvantage, that the high industrial output was indeed achieved under Stalin. Very little of it ever became available to the ordinary Soviet citizen in the form of consumer goods or amenities of life. Great for the government, but not for the little guy. Capitalism allows the little guy to fight for himself and, and allows somebody to become nothing to something. And guess what? And it was by force. Everything was done by force. Yep. Everything was not like, hey, would you like, right now we're having this, uh, this life. And we're yeah. like, hey, would you like to become an entrepreneur? It's an option. Yeah. Over there is by force. If you don't do what I tell you to do, you're going to jail. We do something crazy to you. We don't see you anymore. Yeah. By force. So but, as, uh, as we wrap up this show, uh, Alejandro, any final thoughts, man, before we wrap up the show, man? I mean, we can go on and on, man, but uh, man, how many, a lot of comments in the comment section. You know, Miriam Rivera, you know, uh, has, has got a lot of great comments here. Uh, Raiden Kincona, uh, Hiram Figueroa, um, you know, Ricardo Vellez, he goes, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you know, TCAL W2, bold decisions are made. You know, uh, Miriam says, uh, praying condolences to your, your lost client, uh, Alejandro. Um, Annette Ma Manigault, PHP is the greatest FMO. Um, Jacqueline Fields, please, everyone, I understand about your reputation. We're all part of PHP. Let's respect these men. So we have any people that's just looking at these uh, conversations, like respecting the message that we're putting out. I appreciate you. Alejandro, what a great conversation we had today on episode 20, 20 in Espanol. What is your, uh, what is your final thoughts, bro, as you wrap up? Yeah, yeah um, man, I'm getting the chills just thinking about that last thing I want to say. Look, I think, guys, that, you know, I'm very grateful, right? I'm very grateful for God for putting me in this position because I know that he, he's the one that ultimately we have everything because of him. And, um, guys, I'll, I'll tell you guys one thing. Um, I think that we need to be very clear on who we want to be. And I, a lot of times you're like, you don't know what, you're, what that means as far as the car and the house. And some people are not too clear there. Uh, but I will say that you got to be clear as far as who you got to be for your family. You know, so I made a decision that even though I wasn't book smart, I don't know the difference between there, there, and there, two, two, two. There's a lot of things I still don't. I have four assistants because of the same reason. I have ADHD and I struggle with a lot of uh, other, other subjects in my life. But I will tell you guys one thing. I was clear and I hope that everybody can get clear. Say, who do you want to be for your family? If you see your mom and your dad and, they, and that matters to you, who do you have to be to take care of them financially? If you want your kids and you want to be around your kids and have more freedom for your kids and give them a better example, who do you have to be in order for you to become the person that you got to be for your kids? If you want to travel the world and come through for your spouse, for me, my, the, one of my biggest whys is my wife. I want to come through for her. I want her to say, you know what? I'm proud of the man I married. If I'm ever snoring at night and she can't sleep and she looks over and stares at me and says, man, I married this man. I want her to be proud and be like, man, I wonder what would happen if I married John instead. I can't live with that. I want her to be proud of the man she married. I want my kids to be proud of me. But who do we want to be is one. And what do we have to do to, in order for what? And we have to come to grips with that. We're going to have to sacrifice. Sacrifice our laziness. Sacrifice our bad habits. Sacrifice a big portion of us 
to evolve to the person that we need to become in order for us to become the people that we need to become to look in the mirror and have some self-respect. The most important thing is that when you come through for your family, you come through for yourself, when you look at the mirror, you have a lot of self-respect for yourself because you know what you sacrificed. You were clear as far as who you needed to be for your family and you're doing what it's taking to continue to be that person for your family and be the person for yourself because if you don't come through, you will never make yourself happy. And if you don't make yourself happy, the people around you that live around you, your wife, your kids, they will see an unhappy person. You will make their life unhappy, right? So we got to be clear about who we got to be. So that's, that's the only thing I want to wrap it up with. Thank you again. Awesome. Alejandro, guys, if you guys are in Bakersfield, California, make sure you follow our good friend here, our business partner, Alejandro.BFG on Instagram. Make sure you follow his Instagram profile. If you like what you heard from him, check out his IG stories because he's just not showing you in the front department store window. He wants to bring you into the store and show you what his life, his family, his business is all about. If you like what you have to see there, maybe you can too also participate in some of the things he's going on there. So please make sure you follow Alejandro.BFG on Instagram. Rodolfo, your final thoughts, brother. You know, these podcasts are becoming a very, uh, it's fun, <laughs> that it's excitement. We went from talking about the challenge to talking <laughs> about serious stuff. We're talking about Man, capitalism, we're talking about what's going on right now with the community. And by the way, there is so many other topics, okay? That, so many. Man, we're going to cover stick it next week. Huh? Have, have, yeah. Make sure you stick with us week in, week out, right? Oh, my gosh. It is, man, we need to cover so many other topics, okay? <laughs> there is, I, I don't know if you watch this video about Jack Wilkins uh, speaking about if, if he was a president, what he will do. What, what he will do. do you, have you watched it? That's a, I've not watched it, no. Uh, oh, my gosh. That is a... Uh, we need to watch. We're, we're going to be talking about other topics uh, right, coming so up. Ownership or something like, that. like own, own your mistakes, prattle on those own lines. Your like, mistake. That's why I said you screwed up. Say it. Say the damn thing. Yeah. Let's say, hey, I made a mistake on this, but we need to talk about Afghanistan. What's going on over there with it? The, but but we have more topics to talk in the next uh, in the next um, episode. But these are coming better and better, Matt. I mean, um, the guest speakers are becoming better and better and better. Alejandro, you crush it today, man. The story about from the oil field to successful entrepreneur in the insurance business, parents, immigrants from uh, Michoacan, Mexico, and now becoming successful as a family. What a great story, working together with his brother and his family. And uh, if you're listening to this, if you're listening to this, guys, invite people to a podcast every Wednesday. We do it at the same time. And, um, and let me put it to you like this. If you keep listening to this podcast, you're never going to be the same because the, the, you're going to be here. We're going to be bringing you quality speakers, quality guests that you're going to learn from them. And if you're listening to this, you're a 21, 22, 25 year old, and you like to learn a new career that is going to help you with the right coaches, right mentors, right environment, right values and principles, reach out to somebody, reach out to somebody in PHP and uh, reach out to, to the people over here. Like you want to know who we are and uh, how we do the business. I know Zapala now is in Dallas. And I'm in Houston. We're in Texas. Alejandro's in California. And um, guys, company's growing. And I mean, uh, these incredible things going on right now. So if you like to learn more about it, and maybe one day you can have, we can have them as guests, right? Sapala, like, course, imagine the story. Imagine the story. We're gonna have it one day. Hey, I used to listen to the podcast, and I showing you guys, and I'm making half a million dollars. And you're one of our guests in the future. That might come happen on, to somebody. So I'm Rodolfo Vargas. Thank you for watching, Matt. Final thoughts. Yeah, my final thoughts is, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited now what you have to say. Our, our book of the month for PHP agency, our book of the month, Five Levels of Leadership. You got to figure out what type of leader you want to be. And the weakest, the lowest form of leadership is leadership by title, leadership by position. And oftentimes people try to get away with, you know, living their life like, you got to listen because I'm your boss. You got to listen because I'm a sergeant. You got to listen because I'm a soldier. You got to listen because I'm a president of the United States. We get it. We understand that position and we respect that title and, and we understand that you have to lead. But the highest form of influence, there's five, four other levels between one and five. The highest form of level is a leadership, which is the pinnacle, which is people follow you because of what you stand for. And for those of you watching this right now, what do you stand for? You know, the reason why people are uh, inspired by other people and want to follow other people because they stand for something. Because you don't stand for something, you know, fall for anything. And when you look at this country and you look at where it's at right now, it's needing leadership amongst its ranks. Ladies, men, children, we need the leaders. And uh, if you're looking for a platform to express leadership, if you're looking for an industry to express how leadership can be influenced because you are showing a proof of concept that you can be somebody, you're doing something, you're making the money to get you involved in those 
right conversation, create opportunities that may be opened up to doors that may not have been opened up at the 20, 30, 40, $50,000 uh, income level, but they're not being opened up to $100,000, $250,000, $500,000 income level. You know, Rodolfo Vargas says a lot of doors have been opened up to him. Alejandro, that's fine. A lot of doors have been opened up to him simply because they decided to take charge of the personal finances, take charge of the financial future, and they're not waiting around for somebody else to do something. Like I said earlier, if, you're, if you are a victim, and hopefully I, I tell this to my children, if you are a victim, it's because of ignorance. It's based on, on you uh, 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 not taking ownership of your situation. It's also based on your bad decisions because there's consequences with that. There's consequences of deferring your life and having somebody else take care of you. I'd rather you take care of you. And there's be better consequences with that decision than the decisions of consequences of when somebody else takes care of you. And uh, with that being said, guys, that's the message of PHP agency is to not only sell life insurance and to help people with uh, their financial situation, educate them financially, but our mission statement is to save America by teaching them free enterprise. We want you to be free. That being said, I'm going to have my guest today, Alejandro Aguilar from Bakersfield, California, my co-host from Houston, Texas, Rodolfo Vargas. Make sure you follow my co-host also from Houston, Texas, Rodolfo Vargas, uh, official Rodolfo Vargas on Instagram. I'm your money smart guy, Matt Zapala. And until we meet again, continue to help people, continue to change people, and continue to change your lives and love people today. God bless you guys. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.